What up, tubers? We're back for some more Sealed of Baldur's Gate. Looks like people are uh, responding well to it. People are enjoying the Baldur's Gate content, so I will continue. Uh, just a couple more Sealed. Maybe we'll do a few of the drafts as well as I think the drafts are going to be more relevant down the line. But um, yeah, this is still in the midst of practice for that upcoming qualifier event. I guess by the time that this one gets uploaded, or maybe it will be uploaded on the day of the first qualifier. Um, but either way, it's two weeks worth of potential sealed play-ins uh, if you don't already have the play-in uh, tokens or points or whatever. Anyway, we will jump into the sealed. We will open our packs and hopefully we can get some nice ones. What did we get? The Altar of Bale. That's the good one, right? Yeah, three mana to make a 4-1 Menace. Uh, and then it has a kind of like a recurring nightmare type effect. Obviously not quite as good as a recurring nightmare, but decent black card. We've got the Wild, the Pact Bound Duelist. I didn't get to play with this one last time uh, we opened it, but I know it's good. I'm going to have to remember what it does. Okay. When it enters the battlefield, gain control of target creature and opponent controls with mana value 4 or less until the end of your next turn. So not just until end of turn, until the end of your next turn. So, where do we go from there? When this specializes, you may sacrifice another creature or an artifact. If you do, untap it. After this main phase, there are additional combat. That's pretty good. Uh, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Gains haste. If the mana's value is 4 or greater, sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step. Turn in sorcery. Draw 3 cards unless the opponent plays 5. Perpetually gets plus 3 plus 3 and trample. It's all around just a good card. I don't think I've ever seen this one. Mirror of Life Trapping. Four mana. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, if it was cast, exiled, then return all other permanents exiled with Mirror of Life. Mirror of Life Trapping to the battlefield under their owner's control. Oh, weird. So if you have a lot of creatures that have enter the battlefield abilities, this could be good. This is more of a, like a constructed thing, it feels like. Grim Hireling, we know is good. Four mana, three, two. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage, create two treasures, and then you can sacrifice some treasures to kill something at sorcery speed. I don't think I've ever seen this. The Intellect Devourer. Four mana, two, four. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent exiles a card from their hand until this leaves the battlefield. Each opponent exiles a card from their hand until it leaves the battlefield. Okay. You may play lands and cast spells from among cards exiled with this. If you cast a spell this way, you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast. Interesting. Pretty decent. And then the Ancient Copper Dragon. Six mana, six five flying. When it deals combat damage to player, roll a d20, you create a number. So just a big flyer that can potentially give you some value. All of those were in red black, notably. Let's take a peek at our cards. Let's see what white has. Humiliation, Portable Hole, Rescuer's good. A couple of here, some things are fine. Eh, white looks medium. Blue has a Looter. A couple of card draw spells. Ooh, a couple of Draconic Lore are also pretty nice. Black has a Mind Spike, I like. Cast Down's fantastic, obviously. What does this do? Target opponent sacrifices a non-token creature. If that creature had mana value 2 or less, conjure a duplicate in your hand. That's pretty good. Decent removal. Plague is good. Merchant's good. Three summon deny or three summon undead. And then eyes of the holder. So decent black. Double dragon's fire already in red. Two of these beetles. Of unexpected windfalls, and then we have the wild plus the ancient copper dragon. Not bad. Green gives us there's a Jahera here, a couple of rampers. Myconid's very good. Giant's decent. There's a Corlesa here with dragons. We have one Prism and one Pilgrim's Eye, so those are going to be the baselines of our deck. Uh, might be doing some combination of Jund. Pretty easily going to be going red-black, though, I think, as a baseline. I don't think we want the tools. I do like clutches. That's okay. Plague, Merchant, Hireling, Intellect. The Hook Horror is good value. 
five mana three three that kind of just keeps recurring. I'm not sure about the summon undead. It's like fine. Probably gonna run at least one of them. Probably not more than two. Definitely not three. Two fires. Let's see. No. Prisoners is okay if we want to. Beetles are okay. I think these are more for the aggressive strategies. We'll see about those. Then we get the wild and the copper dragon baseline. Do I want to splash any potential green cards? I don't think we want to splash that. How many treasures do we have? in our red-black so far. Uh, we're actually really low on the treasure count. We have the uh, Grim Hireling, which can make a bunch of treasures, but other than that, it doesn't seem like we have too much. We're probably going to run some number of these uh, windfalls, though. I don't know how good Red Dragon actually is. 4 mana 3-2, that can't block. And the treasure is not super relevant unless you have a lot of good ways to synergize with it. Right? I don't think this is trying to be an aggressive deck. The Dragon Fires don't get any benefit from the 3 twos either because they already do baseline 3. This is a dragon though. I don't think this one that's good though. Hmm. I mean, we probably want to run, like, two of these Summon Undead just because we have two really good creatures to come back. Maybe it's worth running Eyes of the Beholder as another good removal, or not good necessarily, but big removal spell. Kind of like splashing this Druid of the Emerald Grow. Just a lot of value. Four mana 2-2 two, two that uh, grabs two lands is kind of nice. I mean, it's weird splashing for, like, fixing, but... Between Prism, Pilgrim's Eye, and if I end up running some of these, like, unexpected windfalls or treasure producers, it's not that bad, you know? Sadly, I don't get any of the gates. No on-color gates. Yeah, white and blue seem bad, so... I mean, the green's not even that good. I guess the windfalls are good with the double summon undead. Creature counts only 10. I mean, Valor Singer's okay. Probably gonna end up running some of these giant fire beetles, I guess. They're just value. I don't think they're particularly fantastic, but they are a lot of value. Um, I suppose I don't need Mind Rot. Yeah, maybe this is an awkward splash card, huh? It seems pretty easy to splash, though. I don't think we want this Carnelian Orb. Like, do I want to run the red dragons or not? Basically what it comes down to. I don't think they're super good again, but... I guess they're flyers for the Grim Hireling, which aren't bad. But we've just added two menace creatures, you know, so... Probably not completely necessary. I mean, truthfully, if I just end up cutting the druid, then there's no need for to run the Prophetic Prism. Like, that's completely reasonable. We'd still run the Pilgrim's Eye, but... No need for Prism if we're just straight up two color. Although I guess the Prism is like another artifact to sacrifice to, to the merchant. Oh no no, never mind. I'm thinking of uh, Deadly Dispute. That's what it's called, right? Deadly Dispute. This doesn't sacrifice artifacts. Mm, okay, maybe like one red dragon's all right. Again, not very exciting, but fine. Is there a way I can go more aggressive? Not really in red-black. We don't have any more cheap cards. I guess maybe the Gray Slad's not bad if we're running double summon undead. Any other good graveyard synergies do we have? The Altar of Bale. Yeah, we're probably supposed to run the Gray Slad if we're going to do this strategy. Have the Windfall maybe instead. I do like the Windfall with the uh, Merchant. Probably can cut the Hook Horror then. Hmm. 
Is this good? It's like fine. I get to run the majority of my good cards, right? I get to run the Copper Dragon, the Wild, the uh, Hireling, and the Altar. Maybe that's good enough? I'm not really seeing too much of a different way to build this. Oh, I guess I get this card as well, right? In black, but... Yeah, okay. I guess this is how we're going to run it. This might be my first straight-up two-color deck in this sealed format. Usually it's pretty easy to splash something. And usually it's right to splash something, but I just don't think there's much to splash in this particular pool. Hippogriff as a splash card is fine, I guess. Indestructible trick is cute. Flicker doesn't really do much here. None of these blue cards are worthy of splashing. And again, I, like the card I would splash for in green is just a Druid, but that doesn't even make so much sense. So, Alright. Red-black stuff. Let's uh, submit it. Go to round one. Okay, round one here of this uh, Baldur's Gate sealed. We're on the play. Decent looking hand. We've got a uh, turn two, turn three creature into a potential removal spell. So, depending on if the opponent uh, doesn't have a very good hand, we could just roll them over with a one drop, or rather a two drop, three drop here. Uh, we're probably going to want to play out the giant fire beetles next turn would be my guess. Hmm. Interesting. It might actually be better now to just dragon fire that thing away before it can get big. I think that's the right play. Because if they don't have a play next turn and they just specialize that into a 3-4, right? And I won't be able to kill that. And there's Wile. Go ahead and smack in for two and then get the beetles online. Already have the combo in our hand. We can resolve the wild, we can steal their creature and... Uh, oh, that's a good draw too. And then sack it. Let's take a peek at what they got going on here. Permanent you control gain hexproof and destroy a secret creature card. Interesting, okay. So the rest of the cards in their hand are creatures or land. Which is good for us. That means we know they don't have any tricks or anything now. So this will be over pretty quickly if we just find any land for while next turn. Yeah. Land next turn is a good game. That's not a land. Alright, pump up the menace creature. Smack for three. Play out another menace creature. Uh, we would have won that turn had we drawn an untapped land, but... Ooh, an Asterion, too. Okay. Well, now things are getting problematic if I don't draw a land this next coming turn, but we did, thankfully. Oh, wait. This doesn't... <laughs> this doesn't do anything on those... Well, I guess I get to steal their Scaled Nurturer. And then sack it. Okay, interesting. So what does the Specialize? I only have black cards in my hand right now. Let's see, you may sacrifice another creature or an artifact when you do draw three cards unless target opponent pays five. Okay. This has death touch too. Hmm. I want to trade with two beetles. Probably not. I don't actually mind trading for the while. Here. 
because we have the summon undead in our hand anyways. I think that's probably fine. They didn't have a trick last time either. All right, we took a peek at their hand, so. Trade there, I think is good. There's our dragon. Let's go ahead and while. Gonna go ahead and mill three cards since we have another summon undead in our graveyard anyway, or in our library anyways. So take, take their Myconid. And then, do I want to attack here with all these four? Don't think that's a bad play. Did we get to eat one? Probably the Valor Singer. I think I'll trade the Valor Singer for upwards of uh, nine damage here. So we're going to sack their Myconid, get a 1-1 one, one token, get in for seven then. Sure, that's fine. Another Jahera. I mean, really, we just need a six land. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. We can turn that into a five five, or we can turn it into this. So that one seems really good. Let's go ahead and activate. Sacrifice the 1-1 uh, one, one token we got from them, so they can either give me three cards or pay five life. And they've opted to give me, or rather, pay five life. Solid choice. Any six landers? Any land number sixes hiding out in there somewhere? Looks like they're just thinking about uh, specializing. Red. Oh, interesting. So it is a... They're going to give their other thing. Okay, that's fine. Through a merchant. I'm just going to pass here. I don't think we want to trade the while for their gorger, but maybe it's better to. I figure, though, with my Eyes of the Beholder in my hand, I'd rather wait until I just draw that land or use the treasure now to do so. Ooh. So it can't block. You may sacrifice a creature if you, you draw two cards and each opponent loses two life. Okay. Can I kill them next turn now? Do the land anyways. Can't quite kill them, but... Oh wait, this can't block. Never mind, of course we can kill them. Good enough. Okay, nice little 1 0 start. Go on to the next. On to game number two. On the draw. How's the hand look? A little bit sketchy, but we're on the draw, so we just need to find a third land for the Pilgrim's Eye, which we did find. And we have the combo of the uh, Gray Slad mill plus summon undead, so we go ahead and mill ourselves four. And we milled two lands, and a Dragon's Fire, and a Singer. Another Jahira. Jahira. The Lantern of Revealing. There's Wile. 
This is going to be a 4-1 right now. We don't really need the mana yet. But I guess if I play Merchant out this turn, we can potentially play out a 5-drop next turn. Plus this just blocks. I'm giving them an artifact to potentially blow up, but... That's fine. Looks like they're probably going to blow up my treasure here. I'm okay with that as well. Sure. Ooh, we can actually blow that up now too, but I think we're going to go ahead and Pilgrim's... Oh, I should have played out the Pilgrim's Eye before playing out the land. Big deal. Remember, this is hexproof from artifacts and enchantments, but that doesn't mean I can't block. So they go for a card draw effect. Okay, 3-3 three, three flyer. Oh no, they're drawing the card with it, right. Um. Yeah, okay, let's, uh... Oh, I just realized last game I was messing up, wasn't I? I get to keep that until the end of my next turn, so... If they don't do anything to while here, I get to sack their Jahira next turn. <laughs> right, right, right. Could have also stolen their lantern for what it's worth. Hey, the harvester, nice. Uh, sadly for them, I still get to sacrifice their Jahera here. If we want to do that for sure. Oh, and we get to untap our wild, too. That's pretty funny. That ruins their uh, illithid thingy. So they're going to want to hold that until I decide to, like, attack or whatever. Yep, just going to play out their dragon. Hireling's a very good draw, too, here. But I guess what we're going to do is attack with the Slad. See what they do. And then just play out a big old dragon. Next turn we can go Hireling plus Dragonfire or whatever. And yeah, Hireling with the frickin' Copper Dragons, kinda nuts. Sure, I'll take three. Some good synergies all around here. Yeah, it looks like they're just going to run out the 4-4. That flips my Gray Slad into a 2-2. Two -two. So I'm going to go pre-combat Hireling. Back. Get 1 million treasures. Oh, that thing has reach. I didn't even realize. Well, I just missed out on all my treasures, because I'm bad. But we still get a couple out of the deal. Whoopsies! So, 
Obviously, that was a really bad mistake. So that thing had reach because of the trick that they used, the uh, arcane archery. I don't mind if Wild dies. Again, we have the summon undead anyways. That's fine. Pretty big mistake by me, though. So how do we play this? This only has an ability when it specializes, so it doesn't really matter to bring that back, but we do want to attack here for a lot in the air. Okay, and now this should be game over, because now we get to kill effectively all of their creatures. We're going to have minimum five. And how about infinite? Well, I'm glad they also did that, because now I get to mind spike them. What a combo. Under simplify and another archery, sure. So they should basically already be dead, and I should be at much higher of a life total. Because I missed that one hit with the Ancient Copper Dragon, which would have given us who knows how many treasures, right? So, lesson learned there, but we managed to pull that off with some rare Mythic combos. And yeah, we'll go to the next. Keep it up. Okay, on to our next game. On the play. How's the hand look? Ooh, a little bit sketchy, but uh, one mountain off the top and we will be pretty happy, I think. Okay, one land. Any land off the top now, and this hand is fantastic. We get a mountain off the top one time. Ah, everybody has this on turn freaking two versus me. So, the correct way to play this is actually to attack for two. And that way they're more uh, likely to just let it happen. Because if I go Sewer Plague on the Jahera right now then they know the Jahera is going to die, and they for sure block, you know? This way, there's a chance that they just don't block, and then we get in for two damage. It looks like they're thinking about it, though. They're thinking, what kind of tricks are in this format? And indeed, we did get in for an extra two points of damage. Perfect. Sylvan Shepherd, sure. Drew the land. Um. Hmm. So, if I wanted to try to get Copper Dragon down next turn, I would go land, pass, try to go for the Red Dragon, and then draw land. But I think here we're just going to play out the Intellect Devourer right now. Baseline, I get to exile a card from their hand. And then, um, if it's a land, great, I can play it next turn. The spell, great, I might be able to cast it. It's not that we don't get to look at their hand with this, but you get to eat a card from it. Ooh, I wonder what happens if they time out with this trigger on the stack. I guess it would just randomly choose a card. Uh oh. Well, hmm. Kind of sucks for them if it's just going to randomly pull something. Okay, what did we get? Wow. That's very weird. They must have a way to... Wow, that is super strange. 
So what they've just done is they've let me now flicker my Intellect Devour and re-trigger it. I'm not sure if they didn't see this combo or what, but... This is very good for us. And now we ate a Steadfast Paladin. Alright, we don't care about that. Interesting. Okay, well, we don't really care about our Intellect Devourer anymore, but I think I'd rather just go like this. Because this forces them to do something here. And this Ice Wind Stalwart was from their side of the board anyways. Sure. We really don't care about that. Perfect. Okay, so we want to cast the Paladin before this goes away. Go ahead and Pilgrim. And now we just sit back. Resolve Copper Dragon and uh, hope that's good enough. And it would appear that it's going to be good enough. So they need to top deck something here because we just get to slam our 6-5. If they do top deck a removal spell... Uh, interesting. So I'm going to lose flying. Okay, well, that was pretty good for them. Yeah, that was a that was a solid draw, no doubt. I'm gonna have to turn on the gas now, otherwise we're gonna lose to two big flyers. Um, let's see. So we want to go Valor Singer here into pump the Paladin. We will sacrifice the Pilgrim's Eye. Gain a little life back, hit him for a bit. Don't need the treasure. Okay, that's fine. So, pump the dragon. Smack, 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 smack. So if they can find four points of damage, I die. Otherwise, they're going to have to start playing defense. Sure, I guess I'm... Well, no, 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 we don't need to sacrifice. It doesn't do anything. We'd rather be able to sacrifice a different creature if they have a different targeted effect. Damn. Oh, we have a combo here. Okay, so what we can do is go to combat, pump up our dragon. And now that it has four power, we can choose it and just attack with everything. Perfect. Nice. All right. That works. Nice little synergies. And uh, yeah, quick little 3-0 start here. GG. Let's keep it going. On to the next. How's our hand look? Pretty good. This is just regular uh, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms with, I guess, a buffed Sepulchre Ghoul. No! God, this card is so annoying, dude. Uh, turn 1 Warcaller is disgusting. Like, I have to just Dragon Fire that next turn. Literally just have to kill that next turn. And they're on the play, too. Brutal. That is a good replacement draw, that's for sure. This card just lets the aggro decks get so out of hand. And that's fine. Um...
What's the best cast here? I don't think we go for the giant fire beetles. It's either the Valor Stinger or the Merchant. But the thing about playing the Merchant out is that they get to free roll attack with both creatures still. Here, they have to play a land to be able to attack with only the Paladin. Now, obviously, if they have a trick, they can also still attack with the Unicorn, but I think this is the best play for us. Oh, they're just going to main phase activate even better. All right, we'll take our three. Now, I might go with the Ghoul plus holdup cast down. Although, I guess the Merchant's pretty good. Yeah, Beetle's also fine. I guess we can get the Beetle online, too. Just playing out a secondary creature makes it much harder for them to attack, period. Good card. But they can't attack without having a trick now. Only two cards left in their hand, so I'm feeling pretty good about our spot. Ooh. That. I mean, I could have YOLO'd that and just tried to hit something nice, but... Let's go for the Merchant here, hold up the uh, Sacrifice ability and cast down. Versus Red-White. You want to just be able to stabilize. And so if I can fend off their early pressure, our late game... Um, while not necessarily better than theirs, is probably better adapted than theirs. Hopefully if they do play something big, it's a creature that we can cast down. Uh, okay, well since they main phase that, we'll go ahead and go for that. I'll take my two for one. And yeah, they only have one card left. Okay. That's not bad, actually. Go ahead and make them sacrifice that now. And then get a copy of it ourselves. And with the treasures, we can... Uh, actually activate somewhat. Hmm, okay. Okay. Remember, this doesn't sacrifice itself. That's what I was checking. Now, just the question is, do we want to sacrifice the treasure for an extra card this turn? And I don't think we want to. Again, I think we want to save the treasure for the potential unicorn activation. And I mean, they're, they're living off the top of their library, so... If they just brick a couple turns, then we're in a good spot. All right, I'm just going to attack for... Five here. I'll go ahead and go for the most efficient play. We'll go ahead and mill three first. And wouldn't you know it, we hit Daddy Copper Dragon. <laughs> See, and now with these treasures, the uh, unicorn gets real scary. Nice. So yeah, we just attack with everything next turn and we can activate Unicorn multiple times. We have, what, 18 mana, so reach four times minimum. And that's how you do. Stop their early pressure, stabilize, play bigger stuff. I think we're 4-0, right? Going to game number five. On the play here, hand looks great. This Prowler is pretty solid. 2-1 Death Touch. When it dies, if it wasn't blocking, you get to draw a card. So if you're on the play like I am with any kind of... Uh, I mean, I wouldn't call this a super aggressive curve, but... It's just pretty hard to block this and be happy with it. Okay, there's our Copper Dragon in hand. They have a Soldiers of the Watch. Let's go ahead and smack in for two. And I think it's correct just to uh, blow that thing up. Because if I don't kill it now, then it's turning into two two ones. Pretty annoying.
Rasad, that's fine. I get to steal or eat my thing for now. And we top decked a grave choice because I'm great. I guess we can just pass here. Let's see what they do. Because I might want to just red dragon for a treasure and go for the copper dragon next turn depending on what they play. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Did not find the land, sadly. Okay. Hmm. Um. Well, now I'll just do this main phase. Because if they sack the Rasad, I get my creature back. If they sack the soldiers, then I get a duplicate of that soldier. So either way, I get a little bit of value here. Yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to take two, let them get their double team. Not that I have a chance, or an option, right? If they attack, they just immediately get it anyways. Okay, that's fine. Let's play our, our Copper Dragon and hope they don't have a removal spell now. Because if they don't kill the Copper Dragon or, like, Minimus Arrested or whatever, then we have the Hireling to combo, and so if we hit any number of... Uh, Treasures like greater than five, then we can kind of just wipe their board. And I mean, even if they do have a removal spell for this, then we get to summon undead. It's fine. So, yeah, let's hope they don't have the five damage spell. Nice. Big number. Huge number, and now we just wipe their board. What a beating. Definitely worth just doing this all right now. These are all free treasures anyways. they actually haven't scooped yet, honestly. <laughs> and do we want to play out the red dragon? I don't think we do. We'll hold six treasures. In case they play a random fatty of some sort. But, yeah. Like I said, ancient copper dragon with the grim hireling is kind of disgusting. And we might actually be able to kill the opponent here. Uh, I guess we don't need to get greedy. We can just pop off the unicorn. Attack for 11. I was going to summon undead because we could potentially hit our, like our uh, Valor Singer or whatever, you know. And I think I will pass without playing out the red dragon just in case. I don't remember if there's a wrath in this format, but if there is, then... Uh... And we have at least one additional creature in addition to the summon undead, so yeah. Big old treasure dragon with the creature that uh, sacrifices treasures to kill stuff. And that's how you start 5-0. Pretty nice. Okay, on to game number 6. Let's see if we can get a clean sweep. We're 5-0 right now. We're on the draw. Hand is good enough. Not fantastic. A little bit slow, but we have a turn two dragon fire and a cast down now, in addition to a 4 1 if we want to. And that is something we will just immediately dragon fire away. No revealing, no reason to. Yeah, all of the double team cards are play out a lot better than you would think. I don't know what this is. Sacrifice it, search your library for up to two basic lands, enter gates, reveal those, put one onto the battlefield, tapped, and one into your hand. That's a really slow, but really strong, um... Ramp spell. I like it. That's the, card of, that's the kind of card that I enjoy playing, for sure. Uh, I'm just gonna play out the Grace Lad here. 
We drew Grim Hireling, so we really would love to hit an untapped land next turn and just connect in for four and get some treasure if possible. Damn. If we, yeah, if we had run a land there for Grim Hireling, I think we were uh, probably smashing them. I mean, we just hit them for five there, but now they have a bunch of mana. They can cast something swole. Yep. We get to cast that down, but no longer is the Grim Hireling, which would have been really good right here nearly as good although that being said this is a lot of pressure and if they just don't play out too much here while will or whatever you call it into grim hireling or i mean that might have been their trump card they don't have too much else and they're passing yeah we're gonna go for the pre-combat uh, grim hireling here Annoying, but you got me. Double! Alright, that wasn't too bad. It was a 3 for 2 in their favor. And they're out of uh, nonsense, it would appear. So we can go altar here. And then play out the altar. And remember, this thing has menace too, so if they don't have more than uh, one creature, they can't block it. That makes sense. That's this caller. But are they out of cards? They have one card left in their hand, so... If it's not a big removal spell for a big fat flyer, they're gonna have a bad time. <laughs> and they're over it. Alright. You dealt with my weenies, now deal with my rare and mythic. And they said, no. No, I can't. And so we accept our win. We're currently 6 and 0. Oh. Let's go. One more. Okay, on to game number 7. After a 6-0 lovely start. We are on the play here with a decent looking hand for sure. We're going to mind spike on turn 1 since we have a pretty good curve out after the fact. All right, let's take the removal spell here over the orb. So that tells us the other five cards that we didn't see were lands or creatures at that time. So turn two, we're gonna make a treasure. Turn three, we'll play out the beetle. Turn four, yet undecided, maybe just playing out the dragon. And then turn five, we might be playing out the uh, ancient copper. They've got an innkeeper. I don't think we've played against some other crazy bombs yet, so we might have gotten lucky on that front. No need to kill the innkeeper or the damage comes from the treasure and not necessarily the life gain. I don't think we're worried about the life gain yet. I guess we could always just make another beetle too if that gets to attack. Alright, they have a Valor Singer here. Uh, what is this card? This is a new one to me. Tifling. As favored enemy enters the battlefield, note the most prevalent creature type in an opponent's library. When it enters the battlefield, target creature you control fights up to one target creature you don't control. Whenever a creature an opponent controls of the noted type dies, put a 1-1 one -one counter on target creature. Okay. Well, that doesn't really matter. Um, hmm. I don't have a sacrifice effect, and I don't have another land, so playing out the will... The while, probably not the best. If I don't kill the the Valor Singer right now, we're going to take three damage at least. And they're only on three mana right now. I mean, hopefully they just attack for one and play the orb, and then I draw a land for Dragon. That's the uh, ideal scenario. Not quite. Alright, let's just go get the more expensive spell down then. 
That was a really important turn, and we bricked. If we had an untapped land there, I'm going to feel pretty confident about our position. Yeah, Dragon would have started popping off. Okay. I'm still going to go for it this turn. The downside now is that because they have the Herd Gorger Giant, if they have a punch effect, then we're going to lose our Dragon, which notably... Um, if we had drawn the land last turn, they wouldn't be able to do that. So, cross your fingers, they don't have it. Blocks. Okay. Well, that's a good sign. If they had a removal spell, they would have attacked with Innkeeper after killing the dragon. So, we might get a nice large hit here. Lucamina Moon Druid. 2-2, two, two, specialized 3. I'm going to enter the battlefield. You cast it. Seek a card with a basic land type. And then, wow, it turns into something very scary. Jeez, it keeps coming back? Oh, well, we just drew the nuts, so it doesn't matter. This is four mana. So we get to will steal the Lucamina. Oh my god, this is disgusting. Hit them for 1,000. Hopefully get a bunch of treasure. Oh, we didn't! Any number but one, and we get to play out one of these immediately. Well, that's kind of unfortunate. Jeez. So, even if they kill this, the good news is I still have the Lucamina for another turn. That's funny. I probably deserved a low roll, though. Let's be real. And they drew a Valor Singer. Alright, so... With that, we should probably just win the game now. What can I do when I specialize this? Oh, we just win with the ultimate. That's what we do. Doesn't matter. We get an extra combat phase after this. Oh! Oh! No, 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 no! It was saying to... Okay, I was choosing to attack, so I thought we had gone to attacks. So Alright, well, clearly we misclicked there. This is still fine, though. We get a bunch of combats this turn, so... Or is the extra combat only with the while? I don't actually know. Oh, it is. Okay. Well, that's pretty awkward. So, I should have won basically there, but I misclicked. What, what? So, I specialized. I thought I was going to combat. I was choosing a creature to sacrifice to a while. Kind of funny, but we're still super far ahead, so hopefully that doesn't matter. Jeez, <laughs> uh, yeah, they top decked a good one. That's fine. All right, so I can turn this into the red version, which does what? Four, four minutes. Whenever this creature specializes or attacks, you make a two, two. Oh yeah, we're just wait. Oh, you can only activate if you have six or more lands. Interesting. Okay. Well, we need to keep the pressure on. So, let's see. Black. 4-4 Death Touch. No, we want to go red for sure. Yeah. Immediately get a 4-4 uh, four, four and then a 2-2. Two, two. Alright. Again, I should have already won by now, but I misclicked.
Okay, that doesn't matter, and we still just win here. When the Lukamina attacks, we make a token. Sack the token. We had to make it interesting, clearly. Just a little misclick. Just sacrifice my 6-5 flying dragon that makes a million treasures. So, multiple things went wrong there. First, the dragon attack made one treasure, which was unlucky. Then, I misclicked on my Wile or Will's ability to, uh, to sacrifice the dragon. So, again, I thought what I was doing was I was going to combat and selecting attackers. Um, but yeah, I was, in fact, choosing the creature to sacrifice to the specialized. So, funny, but we still ended up 7-0. Uh, and yeah, sometimes you just get there. Copper Dragon was obviously insane. Even just as a baseline 6-5 flyer for 6, that's good and limited. Obviously, when we went off with Grim Hireling, that was stupid good. Um, this card didn't really do much, but I guess that's because we were all, always winning by then when we had it. And then Wild was very, very good as well. So, nice little 7-0. Hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back next time. Peace out.